In this video, we are going to learn what is Streamlit and why you should use it. And then we will create a simple app to understand how it works. And finally, we will build a complete application with some key features like CRUD operations, database integration, pagination and search that will make it easy to navigate and filter data. And then we will apply login logout functionality to the app. Let's talk about what is Streamlit. Streamlit is an open source Python library that enables you to build interactive web apps quickly and easily. Unlike other traditional web development framework, Streamlit allows developers to create fully functional web app with minimal code. Streamlit's key feature is that you can focus on your Python code and Streamlit automatically handles the web interface so you don't have to worry about HTML and CSS. So why you should use Streamlit? First, it's super quick and easy to use. With just few lines of Python, you can build and deploy application to visualize data, take user input and display dynamic results. Streamlit's update in real time, that means when you change your code, your app updates immediately so you don't need to restart anything. So here is an example of code to demonstrate how Streamlit works. Streamlit is a Python library, so you need to install it. So here we are importing Streamlit as st and then we are using st.title which will add a big title at the top and st.subheader will add a subheading right below the title and text input function will create a text box for user to enter their name and then we will store the value in this variable and here we have a number input field for the user's age and we can set the limit for minimum value and maximum value and here we have a button with the condition that if this button is clicked then it will display a string that uh, have user's name and their age and now you just need to run your streamlit app with this command and after running your app you will see local url and network url so the local url link is to access your app on your local machine and the network url allows other devices on the same network like wi-fi to access your streamlit app if you are connected to home or office network anyone on that network can visit this URL to access your app on their own devices. So as you can see, Streamlit makes sure everything show up in the order you write it. First, the title appears that we have right in our code and then the form and finally we have the button here. Now let's move on to building a complete app with database integration, login functionality and more. So first let's take an overview of an app that we are going to build in this video. So here we have a login page where we can log in with the admin's username and password. So we have performed a CRUD operation in this app with database integration. So you can add a new user and here you can see the list of users where you can edit the user's detail and you can delete that user. Also we have a, a search bar here where you can search the user and also we have applied pagination for users. So here I can get five users per page and here is the sidebar where we have two button dashboard and logout. So let's make this app in code. So first we are going to install some required packages and then we need to import these packages. So first we will import streamlit as st and then we will import SQLite 3 for some database operations and then we will import pandas as pd for handling data in tabular form. So then we will import hashlib. It is used to hashing the password and here we are importing encrypted cookie manager from streamlit cookies manager for handling secure cookies in streamlit. Here we are initializing the cookie manager with prefix and password for encryption. So this is a class from streamlit cookies manager package that helps to manage cookies in a secure way. Cookies are small piece of data stored on a user's browser by web application. They are used to remember information about the user across different sessions. We will stop the streamlit script if cookie manager is not ready. This is important because operation that depends on cookies would not work correctly if cookies are not properly set up. And here we have defined a hash password function that will take password in the parameter and it will return the hashed password. Here we have defined a create table function. This function sets up the necessary tables in the SQLite database if they don't already exist. SQLite 3.connect will make a connection to the SQLite database with the file name userdata.db and if the file does not exist, it will be created. Uh, this line will create a cursor object to execute SQL commands. Say.execute will execute SQL commands to create tables if they don't already exist. So it will create a user table with some fields, ID, name, email and role. And here we are creating a admin table with username and password. And then we will save the changes and then we'll close the connection. Now let's define a login user function that will take username in the parameter 
and in this function we will use cookies to store the information in user's browser so first we will set the uh, cookie logged in with the value true here we set the username in cookies and that we get in the parameter and then we'll save the cookies to the user's browser and here we have defined a function to handle user logout by clearing the cookies this add user function will add a new user to the user's table in the database so this function will take three arguments name email and role and uh, it will insert these values to the user's table in the database so here we have defined a view all user function that will retrieve user from the user table with pagination support this line will execute an sql command to select all users and then we will fetch all rows of the query result and then we will close the database connection and return the retrieved data here we have defined a function to search users by name or email so this function will take search term in the parameter it will execute an sql command to search for users where the name or email matches the search term so here we have defined functions to update the user and to delete the user by using sql commands here we have defined a function to return the total number of users in the users table and this is the function to create super admin and here we have defined a function that will authenticate the user so when the admin will trying to log in we will call this function to authenticate the admin and this function is defined to retrieve the admin credential from the database so these all are the function that we are going to use in our script now we will define a main function in which we will write streamlit code to build our app so in this function we will first check if the user is logged in or not so we will show the title based on the login status so now let's run the script right now i get a login title because logged in is not set to true in cookies so here we have a simple logic that will check if a page is not in the session state we will set the page value in session state to view users and if the user is not logged in then we will set the page value to login here we are setting up the page number that we will use when we are working with pagination let's call the create tables function that will create user table and admin table in the database so here we get the admin and if admin does not exist we will create a new admin by calling create super admin function that we have defined earlier and in this function we will pass username and password it will create a new admin with this username and password so here we will check if the user is not logged in and if the page value is login in session state we will display these content we have set the page value to login right now it will execute this code if we check on the browser you can see the fields in this code we have a text input where we get the username and here we have a text input for password and if we click the login button it will first authenticate the user by its username and password and then login the user and set the page value to view user in session state then we will call the rerun function that will rerun our application and when the user get logged in we will display the sidebar and in the sidebar we have a header menu and we have two buttons dashboard and logout so if we click on dashboard it will set the page to view user in the session state and if we click on the logout button it will call the logout user function and then set the page value to login in the session state and rerun the app when the page is set to login then it will check this condition again and it will execute the code again so if we check our browser we get the dashboard and logout button and if we click on logout button then we can see the login page here where we need to login again so here we will check if the page value is equal to add user then we will execute this code where we have the sub header add new user and we have a text input for name email and then we have a select box where we can get the role of a user so if the user will click on add user button it will call the add user function that will create a new user in a user table with name email and role and then display a success message and then we will set the page value to view user and rerun the app and then here we have a simple functionality that will check if the user is logged in and if the page value is view user then we will execute this where we have two columns in the first column we have a all user heading and in the second column we have a add user button which will set the page value to add user so if we check it on browser you can see we get the heading and button and if we click on this button we get the fields to enter the details so this is the view user page 
now we just need to display all the users after this heading and button we need to add a search bar here so we will add a text input here so let's save this and check it in browser Brand. so we set the per page value to 5 so that we will get 5 user per page and then we'll use get user count function to count the total users in the database and then we'll calculate how much pages we want for the users and then we will ensure that the page number in session state does not exceeds the max pages and then we'll calculate offset that determines the starting point for the query based on the current page number for example if page number is 2 and per page is 5 the offset would be 5 and it will start fetching from 6th user so here we check if we have search term then we will fetch the user using this function otherwise it will fetch all the users from the database with pagination and here we are displaying user data in data frame using pandas library so it will display double of list in tabular form and here we have defined columns and their size and these are the headings for the columns so here we are running a loop with index and row using idle rows function uh, and here we have buttons to edit and delete based on the row index and here we have a simple logic for pagination where we have three columns and these are the size of these columns so in first column we have previous button and in third column we have next button which will change the page number value in the session state to get the previous and next page and if there is no user in the database we will display this message and here you can see that there is no user right now so we can add a new user from here and after creating a new user you can see we get the user detail here right now we need to define this edit button so when the user click on this edit button we set the page to edit user in session state and uh, here we will check that if the page value is edit user in session state then it will execute this code where first we will check if the email exists or not and then we will get the new name new email and new role uh, from the input field and when the user will click on update user button first we will check that if the email is already in use or not if email is not already in use then we will call the update user by email function to update the user and then we will set the page value to view user in session state and just below the update user button we have a cancel button so if uh, user click on the cancel button it will directly redirect user to view user page so you can check the source code in the description so here we have a user and we can edit the detail of this user and you can see the name of the user is updated and by clicking on this delete button we can delete this user now let's add some data to check is the pagination working or not so here i have added some user data to check the pagination so the pagination is working great and if we check the search bar we get the detail so if you found this video informative you can like this video and for more content like this you can subscribe to this channel